Hey everyone, just wanted to give you guys the latest update. I am officially radioactive at this moment. I went yesterday and the day before to get my thyrogen injections. Um, and then today went and got my radioactive iodine 131 pill. Um, it's the thyrogen injections made me kind of drowsy. Um, after about like four o'clock, I went and got them um, at 10:30 in the morning. The first day I went, and then I had a uh, endocrine appointment, endocrinology appointment afterwards. Um, and so I had, I got done. I had to wait about half an hour uh, once I got there because pharmacy had to actually prepare the medication because they wanted to make sure I was coming before uh, they make it because it's really expensive. And so I wound up getting out of there around 12.20 and I had about 40 minutes. So I went to uh, Walmart and looked around the produce section. I was just trying to find something to eat because I was really hungry um, and found this little, in the produce section, this little snack pack. It had apples and it had a organic coconut chocolate dip, um, which was really nice because it was coconut milk, uh, no sea salt, no nothing that is um, bad for you on your on the low iodine diet that I'm on. So got that to snack on and then went to my endocrinology appointment. Uh, my TSH level was still a little bit high. Uh, it was only about seven. Um, so she bumped me up to 112 micrograms. Uh, I was, or I was originally taking 100 micrograms, but now she put me to 112. So just bumped up a little bit and I'll be taking that daily and I'll check up back with her, I think in about six weeks. Um, I think it was sometime late March that she put me in for, um, and they're also going to do, because it's been a year, they're going to do re, um, another MRI on my pituitary tumor that I have in my brain as well. So that was that. Then I came home and I had all these grandiose plans to meal prep ahead of time, uh, so that my husband wouldn't have to stress out on my low iodine diet, um, what to make and how to make the things that I, that I can eat. Um, and I actually wound up hitting a brick wall around four o'clock. Um, I got really cold, very tired and fell asleep, woke up around 630 and I was like, crap, I didn't even make dinner for that night, let alone any other nights. Um, and then I looked it up on, um, the Thyrogen website at side effects and it, sure enough, it said it can make you, um, have fatigue and, um, flu-like symptoms and severe weakness. So I was like, okay, well that makes sense. Um, so I went, um, yesterday and got the shot and the nurse that was there that gave me the shot the first day she was super nice she's like here i'm going to give you the phone number um they all carry their own little cell phones so she gave me her personal little uh, cell phone number for work and she said just call me when you leave your home i'll let pharmacy know that you're coming and that way when you get here it'll be just bam bam quick in and out uh get the shot done and on your way Super. So we did that. Then I was able to come home early. Um, it, it was about the same time at 1030. And I think I got the shot before 1030 even because it was so quick. And I came home and hit it. I started making uh, stuff. I made uh, chocolate chip cookies. That's on my low iodine diet. Um, substituting egg whites. I can't believe it's not butter. And... Uh, the non-iodized salt for um, all the things that you're supposed to put into the cookies and also used oat milk chocolate chip cookies. It's a brand called Endangered Species and it helps with, um, I think, you know, it's like six bucks for a bag of the chocolate 
chocolate chips. Um, but they were dark chocolate, but it's, it's good. And it helps to get back to, um, the cause the endangered, endangered species. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, and they were really good. You can't even tell the difference, honestly. Um, and then I made, uh, guacamole with just the avocados. I smashed the avocados, put lemon juice, um, non-iodized salt, garlic powder, and um, cracked pepper in to it and mixed it up. And I have unsalted tortilla chips that I can eat with those. Uh, so I made that. Then I made the dinner for last night, which was just ground beef and uh, peppers and onions. My husband put it in little hoagie rolls with provolone cheese on it, but I can't have cheese and I can't have the bread. So um, I just ate it off the plate. It was fine. Uh, and then I made a roast after that um, and it, with potatoes and carrots and onions and not onions, potatoes, carrots, and celery. And um, for the seasoning, I put rosemary, thyme, um, garlic powder, non-iodized salt, and pepper on it. And that's what we're going to have tonight and probably tomorrow night. And then uh, for the next couple nights, I am going to have him make the dinner, but it's going to be super easy. It's just a spaghetti. And what I use, I have this... Um, comes in a yellow can. I can't remember the brand of it, but it's diced tomatoes and it's like a 28 ounce can, a bigger can, and it's unsalted. And then the Hunt's, um, it's like a can about that big of Hunt's tomato paste, no salt, and ground beef. And then I just add my non-iodized salt in there and Italian seasoning and a little extra oregano and, um, make a sauce with the meat. Uh, I drain the meat, of course, after I brown that and then put the tomatoes and the paste in and, and just kind of stir it around really good until it kind of makes a little bit of a saucy type of thing. And then I just combine it all with the uh, thin spaghetti noodles and it comes out really good. It's It was actually nice. It tasted fresher than using a jar of spaghetti sauce, which is kind of what I usually do but um and then we can eat that for two nights so that'll last us well into my period of extreme isolation uh the radio radio the nuclear medicine tech told me that the harsh isolation should only last about three days um after that I can have a little closer contact as long as I'm not in um, around pregnant women, uh, babies, or small children who are in developmental stages where it could affect their um, reproductive system or anything like that. Um, I do have, I'm in my isolation room here, um, which is across the house, and it's my own room, TV, got my whole setup. My bathroom is right next door. Um, when I go to the bathroom, I have to flush twice. Um, kind of weird. I have to shower every single day because the radioactivity comes out of my um, sweat glands, out of my pores, and it's in my urine and it's in my saliva. Um, side note, not that I'm going to probably be doing that while I'm on this radioactive period, but I can't even kiss my husband because if we should mix saliva, it could get into his thyroid and cause him to have severe problems with his thyroid which is so scary. So you just gotta be really careful with stuff like that. Um, and pets, oh, my poor cat, she's trying so hard to get in the room. It's gonna be a long few days. And the biggest thing is they say, don't let your animals lick your skin at all because it, it can cause cancer in pets, the radioactivity. It can cause cancer in me. Um, that is some of the side effects that they said. Um, they said that you can, um, develop secondary cancers with the high level of radioactivity, um, for people with Sjogren's, which I have, um, for anybody, but even worse with people with Sjogren's, it can 
block off your salivary glands. So my daughter was nice enough to get me some Jolly Ranchers um, to suck on. Sour candy is the best because it really pulls, draws out, gets your gleeker going is what we call it. Um, and she got me Tic Tacs and I have Lifesavers, <coughs> the Wintergreen Lifesavers. Um, so lots of stuff to keep my salivary glands functioning. Um, so hopefully they don't get blocked because that can be very painful and cause a lot of problems. Um, mouth wise and swallowing and eating and everything. If you don't have saliva, it, it could be really bad. Um, another thing, um, you know, my doctor was supposed to come, um, be there for the administration of the radioactive iodine and he wasn't and he waited and waited and waited the nuclear med guy and then finally got a text back from him about 10 minutes later and he said he wouldn't be able to make it for at least half an hour and he was like do you care if he's here or I'm like no I mean really it doesn't matter I just want the pill at this point let's go you know um and it's kind of unnerving because he knew about it for like four days, five days already. And they told me at the appointment that he likes to be there for all of his patients when they get this radioactive iodine. And I just kind of felt like it kind of let me down on that one. And also the fact that like I didn't even get a phone call this week at all from radiation oncology, going through the thyrogen injections, you know, even like a pre-iodine, pre-radioactive iodine phone call yesterday, checking on me, seeing how I was, or, you know, just, I don't know, it's just kind of disappointing to say the least, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, um, I will be going back for the scan. Originally, it was going to be on the 8th, but I talked the nuclear med guy into changing it to the 7th. So I'm going in bright and early, 7 in the morning on the 7th to get my scan. And then I'm going to immediately probably hit McDonald's and get me a sausage muffin with cheese and egg and hash brown with all that salt on it. <laughs> I'm just dying to have that real food again. Um, but so yeah, we'll see, but I will, um, you know, keep you guys updated if I get bored, which I'm sure I probably will. I might come on if I forget to tell you anything. Um, and it just pops in my head and I'm like, oh, you know what? I want to get back on and talk about this then I will. But if nothing else, I will let you guys know um, after the scan. All right. See you guys.